WP Get Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. Okay, guys, so this is my last installment of a video on this uh, uh, animating with uh, standard CSS in a viewport. Um, I've made a very simplified version of the animation CSS. All of the other code remains the same. Um, what I'm going to show you quickly is uh, how it works here. Quickly show you the code and then you can get the code from my GitHub. Uh, I'll update that and the code will be called Animations Simplified. So if we scroll down a little bit here, we have a look at the first one, which is I've got a, uh, just underneath this, I've got three icons and each of those I've added VPA track to uh, for tracking our uh, in viewport and just a VPA slide fade. So watch these three icons down here. Yeah, they came in and the first one came in, there's a slight delay and then there's the second, uh, third, sorry, the third one. So there's my animation out, animation in. So each is staggered with a slight delay. And the way we do that is the first icon has no style attributes uh, added to it. The second one we add a in for our view in uh, state of a delay of 0.2 seconds before it starts, the out delay of 0.2 seconds. So if we look at the first and the second, so the second one will be a 0.2 second delay before it comes in and also a 0.2 second delay before it uh, uh, animates out. Um, and then the third one, I've just made this uh, 0.4 seconds in and 0.4 seconds out. You can make these whatever you like to get that kind of stagger effect, which is a really common sort of a thing. Uh, the next one down, all we've added is our standard VPA track. And I won't keep saying that because we do that on every single one. All I've added is VPA slide fade, and that's given me a default slide in of 30 pixels uh, for my animated block. Okay, uh, and then the next one down, exactly the same classes. I've just added a style attribute for my out of view distance of minus 100, so out of the view, 100 up, and then it's, so it's sliding by more. So we compare that to the first one, very small, amount of animation uh, coming in and on the next one it's just a little bit longer animation as it goes in and out so and that's just by setting this attribute for my out wide distance uh, i've renamed a lot of these uh, variables which i'll look at in the actual code um, to make more sense um, now the next one is just a simple rotate so this is rotating by eight degrees uh, I think it's minus eight degrees. You can set that to whatever you want. And again, it'd be a simple data attribute to change that rotation. Um, the next one down is zoom in. So just called VPA zoom. And we have our in view scale of one for X and Y, out of view scale of 0.8 for X and Y. That's a simple animation there. Next one down, you can see we've got a clip. And on the right hand side, we've got about 5%. So I've got this 95% from the left. 100% and its opacity is uh, currently 0.5. So if I get that into view, uh, I'm adding my VPA clip reveal with no attributes uh, and just setting my data attributes for the top and bottom for where it's going to animate. So that's got no attributes whatsoever. The next one down, we can see we've got a little triangle here and it's rotated. This is the cool thing about the new way that I've done this, and I'll show you what, what I'm what doing about combining the um, effects. So if I scroll this into view, it's come into view, and I've actually got my clip reveal and my rotate. Now on my clip reveal, so the style attributes, I've got uh, the out of view, top left of 0, 0, top right 10%, 0, uh, bottom right of 10, uh, 0, 10%, uh, and bottom left of 0, 0. What that gives me is this 0, 0, 10%, 0, 10%, sorry, 0, 10%, and then 0, 0. So it's still a polygon, a four-point polygon, but I'm getting a triangle. And as I zoom that into view, you can see it actually translating to a four-point polygon, which is a rectangle that covers the entire space. Um, so that's all I have to do, and you can change this to whatever shape you want. So you can actually create your own. Uh, you can even override the actual polygon itself, which I'll show you as well. Uh, and the other thing I've got in here is a uh, some transition timing. So my in-view transition timing is a cubic busier, uh, which I worked out. And I'm going to very quickly bring that up and 
can show you what I mean. So if I go to my actual animated content here, is that I've got a cubic bezier. So this is in Chrome, and I basically created a cubic bezier like that. You can easily go in there if you want it to be different. So if you want it to come in really quickly and then slow and then back, and then just copy this cubic bezier, and then put that in as your timing function. That's straightforward. Uh, and then I've got an in transformation of 2.5 seconds. Uh, using the default out and an out opacity of 0.2. The out opacity of 0.2 is so we can see this triangle uh, as a, with a little bit of um, opacity. Uh, if that's zero, then we can't see it when it's uh, animated out. So every single property of this can be uh, controlled through, uh, through just these variables. Okay, so the next one down is a animated block with a shadow standoff and all that's doing no attributes so it's going moving the actual block to top left by 20 pixels uh, and then it's creating a box shadow below that um, making it look like it's standing off so that's actually as the uh, x and y moves in one direction uh, the shadow moves in another direction to look like it's standing off the page okay and again down here we've combined VPA shadow standoff with VPA rotate and what we're getting is the same thing but we're getting a rotation of minus eight degrees all right so that's the changes that I've made I'm going to show you how that actually works we go over to the actual code what I've done differently all this up here is the same at the top here with the two tracking and no tracking classes for the viewport animations I've got VPA track and VPA no track just as in my previous video I've created a whole bunch of different variables here and for simplicity for naming uh, I've got out and in so that's the out of view that's the in view state so our out of view delay and in view delay is by default zero uh, all of these uh, so rotation distance for x y distance skew x scale y scale um, these are all set to default of either zero, except for scale, which is always one, so it's 100%. Um, so these are set to default to not do anything at all. Uh, our transitions, our out of view transition is 0.7 seconds by default. Our in transition is 0.5. Uh, timing for out is ease out of the transition, and timing for the in is ease into the transition. Uh, now, and then we just got our opacity, out opacity um, with a duration and a timing, in opacity with a duration and a timing. All right, so by combining all these variables, I can then have only two transformation classes. So these transformation classes here um, use all of these variables up here for my transform. So that's my out of view, and that's my in view. Now, the cool thing with this is when you create your uh, specific uh, animations, for example here, this is my animation for VPA slide fade. All I'm doing is setting my out wide distance to 30 pixels. That's it. That's all the CSS I need. And I've now got a slide fade which defaults to an out wide distance of 30 pixels. If I go back to uh, one of these, and I want to change, for example, the da, 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 the Y distance. Uh, I just set a style attribute, set my out Y distance of 100 pixels. Now, if I wanted to animate X as well, I could add an out X distance of whatever pixels or percent or whatever as well, and then I'll get it coming in from the X as well as the Y. Uh, now, what I'm getting at here is that realistically, these become kind of defaults. So not, they're not they're, all they are is defaults for these variables here. You could just as easily just have uh, the VPA track class and then not even put an animation class here and define all of your attributes uh, as style attributes. So you could put a, uh, a you know, change the timing function, change the, uh, the in time and the out time, change the X and the Y and the rotate and the skew uh, just using style attributes without actually having to have a specified animation class name. Uh, so it gives you total control over how this animates. 
Uh, you're not limited to these defined, uh, I call these preferences because that's probably for want of a better word. So our rotate is basically we set our out rotation eight degrees, in rotation zero. So rotate from eight degrees to zero degrees. Right? Now, if we look further up here, we've got an out rotation and in rotation set to zero. So if we don't specify them, we, we're not going to rotate. So this is just an override um, to say we want this one to actually rotate. Uh, VPA zoom, out scale and in scale for X and Y. So when it's in, we want it to scale by um, 10. When it's out, we want it to scale by 0.1. All right, now I'll show you that example here for my scale where I've, I've written those. So I've got an in scale of one and an out scale of 0.8. So my default, if I didn't specify these uh, style attributes here, my default would be it outscale would be 0.1 and my in scale would be 10. So let's actually look at doing that. I'm going to grab that class there. Where's my scale? I'm going to go into my attributes for that. Well, we do. Right block. Go to my style attributes. And I'm going to remove all of those uh, properties that I just put there and then have a look at what that looks like now. So now when it zooms in, it starts from 0.1 and then scales by uh, 10. All right. Simple as changing those attributes to change how that scaling works. Get back. There's my scale from 0.8 to 1. So really, really simple. All right, so coming back to the code, clip reveals. Now, clip reveals are a little different. So what we want to do is we, I'm just doing a four-point polygon. If you wanted to, uh, you could have a variable here. Instead of doing these, you could have a out polygon and an in polygon and specify all of this in the one variable. Um, I've just gone for a four-point polygon. I've gone, okay, I want to know the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, uh, and then for the in and the out. So in the example I've got here, uh, here, I've just got a triangle by 0, 0, 10%, 0, 0, 10%, 0, 0, by my four points uh, creating this triangle here. So that's my out of view. So all I've done is my out, I've created that little triangle and my in is a uh, triangle which is 100% of the view. One weird thing I did find with these variables is uh, what happens is if you've got zero and zero in your variable, it just converts it to a single variable which breaks the uh, polygon. So if I had, uh, for my for example, my uh, uh, top, uh, sorry, in, my in top left, if I had that set at um, zero, zero, in my in here, that there would just become zero. And that won't work because I need two coordinates for the polygon. Uh, so to fix that, I just made a very small number, so 0 0.0001. Um, so it's, it's not going to be noticeable, um, but it makes the function work correctly. So any of these that you're going to set to, in these variables at least, um, to 0 and 0, make it instead of 0, you know, 0 0.00001 or something like that, and that'll work. All right, so, and we want an out opacity by default of 0.5. So we want to be able to see the clip reveal. Uh, in my case here, uh, I've overridden that to be 0.2. So when it's out of uh, view, it's a 0.2 instead of a 0.5. Uh, this one up here, well, I haven't overridden it, so it's 0.5 when it's out of view. So that's my clip path, my underlines. Now, this is a little different uh, because um, we are animating the uh, before pseudo selector. So what we have to do, all this is the same as it was before, except for these variables where it's in and out. Some override, uh, overriding some of the uh, variables from up the top there. So I want a rotation of one degrees. Um, and um, I'm uh, setting some new variables here um, for this class, which you can override as well. Um, so what I'm doing here is uh, da, 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 da. 
So I've got a here, I've got a new transition and transform, uh, and that is because I'm only transforming the pseudo selector before the default uh, transition and transform classes um, are for the whole element, um, which won't work with the underlines and the, um, uh, the, the backgrounds um, using the pseudo selectors. So in the case of these two, the underline and the um, highlighter, um, pretty much the same thing there. Um, I've got to have my own transform and transition for those, uh, and that's the only difference there. All right, then we've got our shadows. The shadow standoff, I've got an in X distance and a in Y distance overriding the variables up the top. And then I'm working out um, what my negative distance is, uh, and this is so I can uh, use, the, use that for the uh, drop shadow offset. So basically minus one times the actual X distance. Uh, and I just noticed an error there. That should be minus one times the Y distance. Um, and then our outbox shadow, uh, which we can override, and our inbox shadow, um, which um, we're sitting automatically. So we can override these two, again, with style attributes uh, if we want to. Um, or it will automatically calculate uh, this based on our uh, X and Y distance that we've specified. So um, that's that. And then what we're now doing is setting our box shadow to the outbox shadow and our uh, inbox shadow to the inbox shadow. And the rest of the animations all happen up here in these two rules here. So that's in its simplicity how it works now. I'm liking this way of doing it for two reasons. One is that uh, there's consistency in these uh, variables here. Uh, and so it's all in and out variables. Um, the, uh, you can make presets by just overriding simple variables. So in this case, it's the uh, Y distance, uh, rotation, uh, scale. Um, so you can make very simple presets just by overriding those variables. Um, or you can add new variables um, to a preset, um, overrides the, uh, the default properties, uh, and then use your presets that you've just defined in there um, in this rule. Um, and that's pretty much how it works. So it's uh, very, very simple. Uh, you can combine your, your, your presets because all you're doing in your presets is overriding um, the global, we'll call these global. So we've got these global variables up here. Um, because we're overriding those, you can combine your presets. So we can have a a skew and a rotate, or a skew and a drop shadow, um, a slide in and a uh, clip reveal. Uh, you can have all of those combined just by adding those preset classes to bricks. So in here, basically, I would take my track block here, and I've just added VPA uh, track and VPA zoom. In fact, there's one we'll just try. So we've got the VPA track and VPA zoom. I added on there VPA... Uh, and try this, let's try the uh, highlighter on there at the same time. So I've just added extra highlighter class, save that. Not sure how this is actually going to work. Okay, there we go. So we've got our highlighter now to the zoom. And just by combining those two um, uh, classes, adding that extra class there. Let's take that off. Let's make it the uh, got some that I need to get rid of here. BPA slide fade. That'll come from the top by 30 pixels. So F5. There we go, it's actually come from the bottom. I think that's saved. But anyway, you can combine these as long as you use your global variables, you can combine these. So I'm gonna stick these into my uh, GitHub. I'm gonna call it the Animations Simplified, and um, I think it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to add these animations. Um, you can get these kind of cool effects like the GSAP type things where you've got the staggered um, animating of icons or uh, price blocks or whatever you want um, and it's just really really simple um, so 
uh, and, and very little code. So uh, anyway, so I hope that's something that is a win for you.